Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the shop. It's finally time to start the habitat box. Once this is squared up, I'll be TIG welding it together to form the structure that will become the floor. This is my Eastwood 200 amp AC-DC high frequency TIG welder. And while that may sound like a lot of garbledy gook, what that really means is I can weld aluminum with it. With 200 amps of output power, I can't weld all that thick of aluminum, but for what I'm doing on this build, I should be able to get everything done. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with TIG welding, the way TIG welding works is we have a torch with a tungsten in it, which you can see in the end, that you use to create an arc between the tungsten, which does not erode, hopefully, and the aluminum or the stainless or the steel that you're trying to weld. So we produce an arc coming out of the tungsten in the end of here, and as the material turns molten, we add a filler rod to it. So the name of the game with TIG welding is you go along creating a puddle, and you continuously dip the filler rod in so that it gets mixed with the base metal. There's a couple more things that are important to control when we're making a quality weld. Number one, we need to make sure that oxygen doesn't get into the liquid base metal or it can cause issues within the weld. To do that, we displace the oxygen using an inert gas. In the case of welding aluminum, I'm using 100% argon and that comes out around the tungsten while I'm making the weld. Now obviously I can't just go cranking 200 amps into any thickness of metal that I'm trying to weld. So for this we need to be able to control how much amperage is coming out of the TIG torch. For this, on my machine, I use a foot pedal. And with this foot pedal, the farther down you push, the more amperage you get. As you can see on here, my max is set at 200. When I push the pedal all the way down, I get 200 amps. The reason we need to be able to vary this is because at the beginning of the weld, we need a lot of heat to start getting things warmed up. But aluminum absorbs heat and and transmits heat very rapidly. So as we start welding, you need to start letting off so that you don't overheat it and just end up with a big puddle. Big puddle being on the floor with no metal left. Now when I'm doing a tack weld, it's a very short period of time. So instead of trying to use a foot pedal, I have a switch. With this, I can go to the full power that's set on the machine panel, get my puddle, put some filler rod in, let go, and I'm finished. Now there is a third way which I don't currently have and that is a thumb control. So as you slide your thumb along a wheel or a belt, the amperage increases and decreases the same way as it would with the foot pedal. To start with, I'm placing a small tack weld in each corner. After this and after every weld I make, I'll be checking to make sure that the frame is still square. To speed this up, I've actually drawn corner marks on my shop floor. Aluminum is nice and clean to work with, but it really moves around with the heat of welding. So constant verification to know that things are not going sideways is very important. Once I've made enough tacks on this side, I'll be carefully flipping the structure over to weld the other side solid. I need to be quite careful doing this as right now there are only a few very small tack welds holding this whole structure together. Once flipped, I again need to make sure that everything lines up with the marks on the floor before I continue to weld. Now some of the more keen eyed of you may have noticed that when I did tack the other side, I didn't put any groove or bevel on the edges. And that's okay because I will go back and do that. What I've done is I've welded the first side, I've flipped it over, and now what I'm gonna do is create a groove using my skill saw and this blade so that the weld that I put on this side has somewhere to sink into. And that's gonna give more weld material and should end up with a stronger weld. When I create this groove, I'm removing about half of the material thickness. This is a simple process and really makes a difference to the finished weld. One of the things that is important to understand is I am by no means the world's best aluminum TIG welder. Part of the reason I chose to do this project out of aluminum and TIG weld it was to get better at it. So you'll probably see some welds that don't look the best in the world, but hopefully by the end, they'll look better. And right about here. Yep, it's been a while and I'm starting out backwards. The TIG torch should be pointing in the same direction of travel, not away from it. One nice thing about TIG is you can go over a mistake and fix it quite easily. And now on to the other four corners. I'm sure many of you have noticed that I speed up a lot of my videos because I'm trying to save your time, but for the understanding of how long this takes, this weld is shown at regular speed. Yep, this is starting to feel better. While it might not look perfect, it'll get the job done. Consistency will come in time. Thank you. 
once I get these four corners welded on the second side, I'll be able to stand it up and weld the inside corners. Welding the inside corners is a slightly different style of weld. This is a fillet weld and it's going to take a little bit more heat than the flat welds I've been doing. It also takes a little more manipulation of the torch. If you're wondering why I just moved the welding machine, the fan blows air at the front and it would have been blowing away my shielding gas. Lastly, it's time to prep and weld the outside corners. And this has to be every welder's favorite thing to forget. Ugh. Ground. It sure is nice to have a tall platform to be able to stand on to weld this. At this point, I'm actually starting to feel like I'm remembering how to do this. With this last weld, the outer floor frame is now fully welded together, and I can move on to the next step. For how long it's been since I've done some aluminum TIG welding, it's not looking too bad if you ask me. Well that is it, that's all I have for you this time. I am soaking wet in sweat. I've gone through about three and a half TIG rods. I'm starting to get back into the groove of things. I hope you enjoyed watching that. There's lots more to come. Stick around, hit subscribe, throw a comment down below, and if you've enjoyed this video, give us a like. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.